that we can enter into today Amen. for the victory right. that He has imputed unto us. Right. We didn't win the victory. Come on. He did. Yeah. But because He did, we can be part of that. Amen. Yeah. Grafted into the vine. My, 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 my. So Praise thankful Lord. today. Amen. This morning I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. Brother Bill was here. He'd say it sounds good. Don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to talk about Something we discussed, and I looked it up through our notes and oh, wow. sermons a couple of years ago, we talked about this. But there's, as we see on the news and reading the headlines and the different things that's going on inside the church, right. and I use that word lightly there, True. but we see things that are going on and it, it caused me to go back and revisit this. And, because many times as a minister, and I know as not just as a minister, but as you, live for the Lord and as you hold to your convictions and you stand upon the truth and you look around you, it seems as if it's becoming more and more less of people that are standing for the truth, that are holding to their convictions. Amen. It seems like there's less and less people that are doing that. And you might find yourself at times thinking, well, I don't know if there's anybody left that believes in living right. Amen. I've seen many preachers through the years that at one time held to the standards or right. at least you know stood for something. Right. And now they stand for nothing. Amen. Amen. The Bible's the Bible doesn't say this, but there's a saying that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And certainly you can find that not in those words in the pages of the Word of God, but you can find right. people who failed to stand for something and they wind up falling. For something that was devastating. Amen. And that's where we find the church today. True. I want to talk to you about the remnant yep. this morning for a few minutes. Now we've talked about this word before. The word remnant means a small piece left over of the original. Yep. Amen. On. One of the dictionaries puts it this way. That which remains of the original. The word remnant is found in the Word of God 92 times. Most in the Old Testament... Some in the new. And we're going to look at a few of those scriptures today before we get to our foundational scripture that I want, want us to read. But you will find that all throughout the history of mankind, whenever man turned from God, whenever they turned to false idols and false God worship, whenever they turned away from the one true living God, there was always yet, even though the masses, and it seemed like the, 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 uh, the, the mass of people, the most of the, of the population had turned away from the true living God. There was always someone, somewhere, Brother Dave, that was still clinging to a saving hand. Amen. There was always someone. When everybody, it seemed everybody was bound to bail, there was always somebody that God had that was still standing for the truth. So if you find yourself today worried that the true church, the remnant, is going to take her last breath and die out and going to become extinct, let me rest. Let me cause your heart to rest assured this morning. Amen. God has always had a remnant of people who refuse to bow the knee to bail. God has always had a remnant. May not have been a big remnant, just a small remnant. Amen. But He has always had somebody somewhere that refused to bow the knee to the false god of the ages. Amen. That refused to bow down and kiss the world system's ring. Amen. So today as we look into the Word of God, we find the word remnant in several places. Like I said in the Old Testament. And I found it in one place the very first time it's mentioned in the Word of God. And Brother Sleece, this is one of the little things that did something for me that's probably going to go right past a lot of people. You probably, I don't know if you're going to get it or not. I'm not even going to preach real hard on it this morning because if I do, I'm going to get a lot of letters and emails from theologians out there that think they know better than I do. And they probably do know better than I do when some things. Amen? But I want us to look the very first time the word remnant is mentioned in the Word of God. The Bible says in Exodus the 26th chapter and the 12th verse. And you might think, how in the world does this go with that? Maybe by the end of today's sermon, you'll look back on the first Scripture that I used and maybe it'll mean more to you. Maybe it'll be more relevant to you. We find the word remnant mentioned the first time in the book of Exodus when it was describing the, the uh, structure of the tabernacle. Whenever he's giving the, the uh, instructions on how to build 
the tabernacle that they would take with them through the wilderness. They would tear their tabernacle down. They would take it apart. And they would carry it with them on their journey. Right. And then whenever they would find a place to set up, they would set the tabernacle back up. So it yeah. went with them. Amen? And the first place that we find the word remnant deals with the curtains that surrounded, which actually made up the walls of the tabernacle itself. Right. In Exodus 26 and 12 it says, And the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remaineth, that which is left of the original, that which is left of the curtains that you have used to use for the walls around the tabernacle, and if we had a better picture than that, I thought we had one at one time, a better picture that you would be able to see the walls that surrounded the tabernacle and how that all the furniture was laid out in the form of a cross inside of the tabernacle. Amen. It says to take the remnant of the curtain that is left right. and hang them over, it says she'll hang over the back side of the tabernacle. Come on. Oh my Lord. I can't get stuck on this. <laughs> Take that which is left of the original, right. the remnant, that that remains of the curtains. Mom knows what a remnant is. If you ever make a dress or something and you have a piece of material when you cut out and you make your dress, well, here's the material you have left. Right. It's, it's made out of the same thing of the original. It's just what you have left. Amen? He said, Take that which remains of the original and hang it on the back side of the tabernacle. Now, the back side of the tabernacle is here. Yeah. Where the Holy of Holies was at. Amen. Amen. Take that remnant that remains right. and put it on the west end, right. which is where the Holy of Holies was at. Put that on the end of the tabernacle, on the back side of the tabernacle. Take that remnant that remains yeah. and put it there where the Holy of Holies is at. Amen. Amen. Now that might not mean a lot to you, but it might by the time we get through right. with this sermon. Because whenever I read that, and I know, I know, you're smarter than I am out there. I just get things different, I guess. I just see things a little different. The remnant, if you looked and tried to find where is the remnant at? The Holy of Holies. The place where God's presence was at. Amen? Right. God's always going to have a people. He said He inhabits the praises of His people. God is always going to have a remnant. Yes. Yeah that praises and worships Him. And where they are, His presence is. Now I realize God's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Yes. But I'm talking about His presence. His holiness. His righteousness. Amen. Where the remnant is, you can find that. He is holy. Amen. Where His praises are going up, you can find His presence. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave it right there. Leviticus 2 and 3 says this, and you don't have to go to these scriptures because I'm going to jump to a bunch of these, but I want to give you a foundation, as it were, of the word remnant. Leviticus 2 and 3. The Bible says that the remnant of the meat offering, the meat offering that was offered, the remnant of that, that which was left over, the Bible says, shall be for Aaron and his sons. Now Aaron and his sons represented the priesthood. Amen? Right. And the meat offering, the remnant that was left of that, the Bible says it is a thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. The remnant of the meat offering was to be consumed by the high priest, to be consumed by the priesthood, Aaron and his sons. It was a thing most holy. God puts a high importance on the remnant today. When you read about the remnant, when you read about the remnant of the curtains, we see what He did with those. Amen? Yeah. When you read about the remnant from the meat offering, we see what it was used for. The remnant of the curtains went to the Holy of Holies. The remnant of the meat offering was the most holy thing, it says, and was to be consumed by Aaron and his sons. That shall be theirs. Amen? That belongs to the high priest. Amen. That belongs to the high priest. We have a high priest today. Amen? Yes. 2 Kings 19 and 30 says, And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall not again, shall yet again, shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of the Mount of Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. So we always see a remnant not only in these material things, that God put an importance on, but in a remnant of His people. All right. A remnant of Jerusalem. 
Leviticus 14 and 18 says, And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall pour upon the head of him that is to be cleansed. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. The remnant of the oil was used, that which was left of the oil was used to pour over the head of the one that needed to be cleansed. We see very distinctly that God has a special place for what we call the remnant today. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 37 and 31 says, And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Ezekiel would say this, Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth. Both sons and daughters, behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought it upon that I have brought upon it. He said, You will be comforted when you see the remnant, when you realize that God still has a people, when you realize that everybody's not dead that believes in standing for something, when you realize that everybody has not bowed their knee to Baal. I can't tell you how refreshing it is for me today to find someone. Yeah. And it's not easy anymore. Amen. And even here in the Bible Belt. Right. Amen. It's not easy to find people who stand for something in the day that we live in. Amen? Amen. I can't tell you how refreshing it is for me to come across somebody that still has old-fashioned Holy Ghost convictions. Amen? Somebody that don't think anything and everything is okay. Amen? Yeah. Somebody that still believes in the one true God. Amen? Oh, somebody that's not afraid to stand and say, wait a minute. Jesus oh. said He is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the the only life. Amen? Amen? Somebody who's not afraid. Somebody who will not bow down. Come on. We're talking about the remnant today. That which is left over from the original. They steal some of us out here. Amen? Yeah. It may seem like today that you're alone, but they steal some of us out here. Oh, Amen? True. There's still some of us today that still believe in the old rugged cross. There's still some of us today, Brother Scott, that are still trusting in His blood. Amen. There's still some of us out here today that still believe in preaching the cross, Jesus Christ and Him crucified and the finished work that He did there. There's still a remnant today that is holding up the blood-stained banner of the old rugged cross. So we see time and time again in the Word of God. Go with me to the book of Joel. Do you want to go over there? Go with me to the book of Joel. Mama's freezing to death. To the book of Joel. Now this scripture is something that we in Pentecost have heard a lot because most of the time though we hear the quote from the book of Acts where Peter said this is that which was spoken of by yeah. the prophet Joel. See what Joel says here in the second chapter in the 28th verse. Still talking about the remnant. Still talking about those that refuse. Refuse. To bow down to the grave. Is it in the Sudan where they're waiting for that young woman to have the baby and yeah. then they're going to beat her to death? Right. Amen. Right. Because she will not denounce, she will not deny Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. Listen, it might get that way for all of us before we get out of here. Amen. We might have to stand before the leaders of the day and say, I will not, I refuse to deny the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I refuse. Right. Listen to me. The disciples stood before the leaders of their day mm -hmm. and faced crucifixion, True. decapitation, True. torture, right. the flames of being burned to death, True. and said, I will not deny Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We may have to face that kind of thing. True. They are already facing, we're thinking, well, it's going to get bad when the tribulation, it's already bad. Amen. Really bad over there in those places where they're being killed for the cause of Christ. Amen. Yeah. If you talk to them about the tribulation period, they think they're already there. Amen. Because right. they're already laying down their lives right. for what they believe. And we think it's a sacrifice to get up and go to church. We think it's a sacrifice to get ready and go to the house of the Lord. We think it's a sacrifice to put some money in the offer to continue the work of the Lord. We don't know what sacrifice is. Amen. Amen. That's true. Whenever you have to, whenever you have to put your life on the line, right. when you have to put the life of your family and your children, your wife, your husband on the line, 
Then you might be able to realize what sacrifice is. We don't know what sacrifice is today. We are so spoiled rotten. It's pitiful. Amen. If things don't go just the way we want it. If the music is too loud. If the church is too hot. If the church is too cold. If God forbid if the preacher preaches too long. Amen. We can sit in front of a television and watch a two hour movie. And we are sad when it's over because it wasn't long enough. We can sit in the church pew and listen to a preacher go longer than 30 minutes. And leave the church house complaining that he went went too long. Amen. Something's wrong with our heart today. Amen. 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 Something is wrong with our heart today. There should be more of a hunger for the Word of God in you than there is a hunger for the Hollywood things that they had to offer. Come on. Come on, tell it. One of the biggest movies, I guess, that's ever made money or whatever, one of the biggest money makers, Titanic. I never watched it, but how long was it? Three hours? Four hours? Three and a half hours, whatever it was. And people watched it over and over and over and over and over. And over. Oh, that preacher better not go longer than 30 minutes. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Well, you have my permission. If I go longer than 30 minutes, you can get up and walk out. But I refuse to stop the sermon just because you're ready to go to McDonald's. Amen. Right. True. God will have a remnant that are hungry. For his word. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Thirsty mm -hmm. for his spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hungry. What's it say in Joel 2 and 28? If I ain't careful, I'm going to preach. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out of my spirit. I'm in Joel 2 and 29. Going to Joel 2 and 30 now. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Amen. And it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. What's he talking about? He said in the last days, saith God. So we see here the prophet Joel through the wisdom and through the eye of the Lord. Seeing down through the ages of time. Letting us know that in the last days, there will be a remnant. Amen. Amen. You are not alone today. Right. You're not the only one that's serving God today. Amen. You're not the only one that still believes in the Word of God today. Amen. Right. There will be a remnant. There yeah. will be a remnant. Romans 9 and 27. Amen. Paul writes, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Now think about that. He uses the example as the sand of the sea to number. In other words, innumerable. A vast number of people. But out of that will come a remnant. It's the same way today. We've heard the expression, a church within the church. Amen. Amen. There is a remnant of people today. Everybody that says they're a Christian, honey, ain't a Christian. Amen? If you, according to survey studies and everything, what, 80% something of Americans claim that they are Christian? And Brother Slee said that's, that's a term that is used too widely. Amen? All right. If, if, if Americans truly, if 80% of them, or whatever the statistic is, Brother Scott might be able to tell you, if that many people in America were Christians, guess what? Abortion would not be legal. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. 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 Abortion would not be legal. Homosexuality, marriage would not even be a question. Amen. amen. Because it is an abomination before the eyes of God. The murder rate would not be up. The rape rate would not be up. There would not be two out of every four marriages dissolving and ending in divorce. Amen. There would not be there would not be abuse the way it is. There would be prayer. There would be prayer in school. Amen. There would be prayer in the public square. There would be prayer in the halls of Congress. Amen. If that many people 
we're truly Christian. Oh, really? Oh, preach to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it ain't hard to see today. When you compare our laws to this eternal law, it's not hard to see. Come on, brother. That we got more preach it. sinners running than we do saints. Yes, sir. Amen. Guaranteed. But everybody's a Christian. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Everybody's a Christian. So all of these things in the Old Testament and even this scripture here of the New that discusses the remnant. I got to thinking about in a day where the news headlines get more ridiculous all the time. I'm talking about concerning the church. Right. I happened to see someone post this on Facebook and I went to see if it's real, read the headlines, and it was. I figured it was. I didn't figure it was wrong. Yeah. But a church in Portland, Oregon... They call their church services beer and hymn night. Amen? Beer and hymn night. And they showed them, they're out there. Oh, fly away. They flying, all right, but it wasn't on the spirit. Amen? They had their cup of beer. They was passing it around. So in a world where you see our beer drinking churches, amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And then I thought about the church up in Virginia that we talked about several Sundays ago where they all get together nude. Mm. <laughs> Amen? Oh they have church in the nude. Mm. Because it takes away all the barriers and it, it you know, you can't tell who's got money and who don't because everybody's naked so they ain't got to worry about who's got on the best clothes. Mm. Now Brother Tommy's hot. Hallelujah. Uh. <laughs> but their pastor stands there preaching mm. in the nude. Mm. And this doesn't have one thing that has to do with the other, but the name of the church is the White Tail Church. <laughs> Think about that. Oh, that's not because what I thought. <laughs> oh, it's on a nudity resort that's called the White Tail Resort. Mm. Amen. And they're all showing up naked. Mm. So in a world where you see our beer drinking churches, and that's that. That's not that's becoming more a normal thing than it is extreme anymore. But the nudity churches, I guess that's considered extreme. Amen. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yeah, for now. Yeah. yeah. I've been in churches where, I mean, and they had clothes on, but it wasn't enough clothes. I can't imagine going in there and they was completely naked. Amen. Amen. Somebody wrote me the other day and wanted to know what our dress code was. If they needed to have their sleeve to the to their to their uh, elbow or if they needed to have it down to the really? wrist or whatever they had, and I said, just wear some clothes, please. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't come in naked. Right. <laughs> so we got our beer drinking churches in Portland and other places. We've got our white tail nudie churches up in Virginia. Amen. Of course we got our snake handling churches. That's been in the headlines, amen. Yeah. And then we've got our coffee drinking churches, amen, where you can go out in the lobby and get you a, what's that big name, coffee, Starbucks, amen, oh, bring it in and sit down in the pew and drink you some Starbucks, amen. Yeah. And then you've got New Age churches, of course. They're probably the most popular. Come on. Pushing their New Age doctrine, their New Age theology and all of that. Mm. Francis and friends got a letter this week from the United Kingdom, and it was from a couple over there that were concerned because they were seeing more and more in their area. They were seeing more and more what they're calling pub churches over there. Yeah. Pub churches. What we call bars over here. Yeah. Right? Pub churches yeah. over there. Amen. Yeah. So this thing is widespread. Mm -hmm. And it's easy for you to look around and think, my Lord, what is going on? Has the church completely lost her mind? Are there any morals left? Are there, is there anyone standing for the truth anymore? Come on. God wants us to know today that there is a remnant. Yes. That there is a people. He will always have of people. And it almost makes you want to look at the mess and say, will the true church please stand up? Amen? Yeah. And be counted for. Yeah. Will the true church please stand for something one more time? Will the true church please stand up on your two feet and boast of the power of the cross once again? Oh. Go with me to Romans, the 11th chapter. Romans, the 11th chapter. The Apostle Paul is writing a, writing a letter to the Roman people. Now, Paul hadn't had an opportunity to go to Rome yet to be able to preach. But he was sending his letters. And he had heard by word of mouth or by letter from someone there that there were Christians. There were small groups of Christians. Now, at that time, the Roman populace there where he was writing the letter to was over a million people. There were a few people there. Not a lot. But there were a few people that were Christians, born again. And he was writing to them this letter. 
He was trying to let them know, I know you might get discouraged. I know you might feel disheartened. But I want you to know that God has a remnant. Today you may get disheartened. You may get discouraged. You may feel like nobody anymore believes anything, stands for anything, preaches anything. God wants you to know that He's got a people. He's always had a people. He's got a remnant. He's always had a remnant. He will continue to have a remnant. Amen? Someone told me once, they said, the way things that are going in 15 or 20 years, there won't be nobody left that preaches the truth. There won't be nobody left that stands for anything. Oh, yes, there will. The number may not be big, but He will always, always, always have a remnant of people that refuse to bow the need to bail. Let's see what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 11 and 2. God hath not cast away His people which He foreknew. Want ye not what the Scripture saith of Elijah? In other words, don't you know what the Scripture says of Elijah? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed the prophets, they, and they dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Y'all remember that. Y'all remember how that Elijah got so di discouraged that he found himself up there in the cave and the Lord speaks to him and says, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he begins to tell the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm the only one left. Nobody else is standing for anything. I'm the only prophet that you have left. I'm the only man that you have left that's standing for anything. The Apostle Paul is telling those that are in Rome at the time, do you remember that? Have you heard of that? How that when Elijah thought he was the only one, that nobody else was alone, what saith the answer of God unto him? This is verse 4. This is what God's answer was to Elijah. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, the Apostle Paul goes on to say, even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of of grace. So you may feel today that there's no remnant, that there's no one left, and everybody's bound on the knee to bail. But the Lord wants us to know today what His answer is. At this present time, in the year 2014, I know that it looks like nobody's preaching nothing. Very few. It looks like the flame dwindles a little bit more every day. It looks like the darkness is overcoming the light, but rest assured, God has had, God does have, and God will have a remnant Amen. that stands for His name. Yes, sir. <laughs> God will have, Brother Scott, somebody, a preacher somewhere. True. Right. God will have some Daniels that when the law says you cannot pray, will bow down three times a day with their window open just like He did before in spite of the law and pray anyway. Amen. God will have a remnant when Congress passes laws and says you cannot worship Jesus Christ. You cannot pray to Him. God will have a remnant that will say, what did the law say? You can't pray, huh? Oh, thanks for letting me know. Oh, Lord God of heaven. Oh, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's going to have somebody that don't care, well, that, that, would, that are willing to obey God rather than man. Amen. Yeah, man. He's going to have some, That's why, that's why the, the, disciples, the disciples could have lived a lot longer life than they lived. But they refused to obey man right. other than God. Amen. True. We're going to have to do that. Amen. We're already having to do that to some extent. Amen. Right. Things gonna get worse. Right. It's gonna come down to where you either got fish or cut bait. Right. You're gonna have to decide you're gonna go on or you're gonna stop and give up. Right. When you stand in the face of the of the, 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 the majority of the crowd mm -hmm. that is going the opposite direction, when you stand in the face of popular opinion, when you stand in the face of the laws of the land, and you say, I refuse mm -hmm. to deny my God. I refuse to stop praying. Come on. They told Daniel, they said, you can't pray. For 30 days, nobody can pray except to the king. Yeah. Pyrrhus always went to man's head. 
Right. It went to Lucifer's head. True. Uh -huh. yeah. He got to look into his own beauty and his own power, and he thought, hmm, I can be like the Most High. Yeah. I will ascend above him, and I will be like him. Oh, yeah. no, you won't. <laughs> Amen. True. Oh, no, you won't. Amen. You false teachers out there today that stand in your pulpit and say, I'm a little God, you're a little God. Oh, no, you ain't. Right. Amen. God's ways are above our ways. Amen. His right. thoughts are higher than our yeah. thoughts. Right. God, we can't even begin to understand the vastness of God. True. Daniel said, the law says don't pray, huh? Well, I'm going to go pray anyway. Yeah. God's going to have a remnant. Amen? Exactly. How about the Hebrew boys? Uh-huh. When the law was passed, that listen, when we begin to play the music, everybody got to bow down and worship this idol, this image that has been erected. And I, I know that it didn't probably, it probably didn't happen like this, but this is the way my little mind can picture it. It reminds me some of over there in Rome, whenever the Pope is going to step out on the balcony and give a speech. Or, Whenever he's going to, whenever they're announcing a new pope, and you see on the news where the whole square, the whole street, as far as you can see, there's people right. standing out there waiting, watching for the puffing of the smoke or the pope to stick his head out the window. Mm -hmm. And I can almost picture that at the time, whenever the music is going to sound and the worship, you can see a vast number of people, and you can hear the music begin to play, and almost like the the wave that you see in a football game, except they don't come back up. You can see the people begin to go down. All the way. But in the distance, you see something. It looks like three guys standing in the midst of all this crowd that has kneeled down before this false idol. What is that? Is that, oh yeah, it's three men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that said we refuse to bow down to your image. There we find a picture of the remnant that refused to bow down to the graven image that the king had set up out across that vast number of people. The Bible only speaks anyway of three men standing there. Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Bring them to me. Bring them to me. And the king says, listen boys, when you hear the music, if you bow down, then everything's going to be okay. If you don't, we're going to fry your honey. Amen? We fix it to throw you into the fiery furnace. And you know what them old boys said? Well, let's have a meeting. Let's, we, can, we, can, uh, we can just be some secret God worshipers. We can just bow down, but don't really mean it. And we can just worship God in private. No. No. They didn't... They, Matter of fact, the Bible says that they said, we're not careful to answer you concerning this. We don't have to have a powwow. We don't have to try and decide. They said, we will not. They said, we know that our God is able. We know that He will. But even if He don't, Brother Dave, we refuse to bow down to the image that you have set up. That's the kind of people that God is going to have that's going to last throughout the ages until He returns. He's going to have somebody somewhere. It may be some old grandma and grandpas uh, passing these things down to their grandkids somewhere out of the backwoods of Kentucky. But God's going to have him a man. He's going to have him a woman. He's going to have him a people that refuse to bow the knee to bow. Yes, man. That refuse to kiss the ring man. of the socialist doctrine that is being pushed into our churches today. we we got all kinds of preachers that have bowed their knee. Yes, sir. Amen. True. They have bowed their knee at the altar of money. They have bowed their knee at the altar of prosperity. Amen. They have bowed their knee at the altar of psychology. True. They've taken out the old rugged cross. Absolutely. They throw in some atheists trying to get that, that iron cross removed from out there where the twin towers fell. And that, that iron cross that, that survived and stood there, it's, they've got a little fence, I think, around it. But now there's some atheists throwing up a stink about that. Right. And we've got Christians saying, you know, oh, we can't allow them to do that. <laughs> you sit in your pew while your board voted in a preacher that said, let's take down these crosses because they're offensive to people. Let's take down these religious symbols because they're divisive. You sit in your pew while your pastor every Sunday preaches something other than the cross, but you get... A little beside yourself. 
when they're going to take away the iron cross there at ground zero, should they? No, it should be left alone. It should stand there. Right. You got something else to be worried about even more. Amen. Amen. The absence of the cross in your preacher's messages. The absence of the cross in your church. Joel Osteen, and I'll cut this out later so we don't offend our radio listeners. Joel Osteen, the poster boy for mega church preachers, said we don't have crosses because we don't offend nobody. We don't have religious symbols in our church because we don't want to offend anybody. The, new, the news reporter said we don't see any crosses. We don't see any religious. No, we don't have any. We don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to read about I got news for you. The cross is offensive to some people. Yeah. But the preaching of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. Amen. You cannot get rid of the cross and still have power. You cannot get rid of the cross and still have truth. Everything we preach rests upon the finished work of the cross of Calvary. Yeah. You can't get rid of that. Amen. The churches have. Yeah. But there's still some. There's a remnant that's preaching the old rugged cross. Amen. Come on. There is a remnant today, and I'm yes, getting really sir. close. There is a remnant. Yes. However small it may be, right. and it'll be very small compared to the masses. Come on, preach. That's why Jesus says, straight is the gate and narrow the way, and few there be that find it. Now, He didn't mean there'd be just a handful. Because you read over there in the book of Revelation, John saw a number that you couldn't number. Right. But when you compare that remnant mm. to the billions and billions of yeah. people... The remnant is small right. compared to that. Amen. Amen. The remnant is small. Whenever the Lord spoke to Elijah mm. and said, I got 7,000, yeah. that was a small number compared to the population at that time. Amen. Amen. But he had him 7,000. So there will be a remnant right. that will cling to the old rugged cross. There will be a remnant that will refuse to deny him. Amen. There will be a remnant that will refuse to sell out to the devil in the world system. There will be a remnant that will hold to the truth of His Word Absolutely. and not fall for the ear-tickling fables of man. Exactly. Amen. Amen. We all time talking about the King James fixing to become extinct. I don't really believe that. True, it is outnumbered by the perversions out there that are on the shelves. Right. True, it may not be as easy to find as it used to be. But I truly believe, because see, they've been saying this for over 400 years. I truly believe that it will remain as God's guiding light as far as the closest thing we have to the original text. I believe that it will remain. I'm thankful today for Brother Swagger and the Bible funds that they have. The money that they raise to see in the Expositor's Bible overseas in different places. Because it's the King James Version. Amen. I forget how many copies have sold. I know it's well over a million. And it's a King James Version. And they're sending it to places, countries over here. So I don't think it's going to die out. I don't believe it's going to. I believe, there's, 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 I believe that this is the remnant of God's Word. I believe this is what's left from the original. This, this came from the original. Amen. Amen. I believe today that God's Word will remain because Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall remain. Amen? And I know it means more than just this printed book up here, but I really believe, I really believe that God has preserved it and He will continue to preserve it until it's time for Him to come back. Amen? Until it's no longer needful for us. Amen? Until we have the Word in the flesh walking among us. Amen? Amen? I believe there will be a remnant. Amen. I know that there will be a remnant. Amen? Yeah. Because God hath not cast away His people. Amen? Right. That in this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. I believe today there is a remnant. I ran out of time today. I was going to talk to you about the two churches. The last two churches in the book of Revelation. Use that for some study time this week. Go over there and read about the last two churches. Of course, we know the last one was the church of the Laodiceans. That represents the apostate church. The ones that have turned away from the truth. Amen? Right. Read about the one before that, the church of Philadelphia. That represents the remnant. Amen? Those that have not denied His name. Those whom He has 
Those he, he said He would keep from the hour of temptation that shall come upon the face of the earth. Those that He has set, those that, that have not denied His name, that those that have kept His word. Amen? He that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth, says He has, op he has set before them an open door that no man can shut. That's the remnant church. That's Revelation, the third chapter, beginning of the seventh verse. And you can learn about the remnant church there. And then down in verse 14, it begins to talk about the apostate church. Those that have turned from the true, from the message of the cross and turned to false doctrine. Those that believe riches. They believe they're rich, increased with goods, have need of nothing, but they're blind, miserable, and naked. Amen. And in these last days, God has a remnant. Amen. Right. God has a remnant. He will always have somebody that's going to stand for the truth. Somebody that's going to preach the truth. Somebody that's not going to deny His name. Somebody that's not going to bow the knee to the false gods of this world. That are going to stand and say, Our God is the true and living God. Besides Him, there is no other. We, we, we refuse to deny Him and His Word. Right. Someone else this morning have something before we go.